Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We're going to address another uh, great topic today and we're going to teach you all about it. And the topic today is intention to treat. Um, a new term we're going to be seeing in a lot of studies. Again, my name is Premier Charyat and I work as a physician and I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency director of research and I also have some pros for medicine at Hackensack School of Medicine. Okay, so let's look at, um, you know, again our topic is like intention to treat. Um, so what is the definition of intention, intention to treat? All randomized patients in a study um, regardless of their adherence to treatment, withdrawal <coughs> or deviation from the treatment protocol should be analyzed. So pretty much, you know, you decide to conduct a study and uh, you have to, I mean, you know, first thing, what would you do? You calculate the sample size and uh, um, you put, uh, put them into two different arms. At the end, you, you do the study. In this study, uh, a lot of times when we do a study, what happens is like a lot of people get dropped out or they have a complication and they drop out. Some people will not listen to the protocol. And uh, when we do the analysis, uh, uh, when we talk about intention to treat analysis, you have to take everybody in, even the people um, you dropped out or have uh, did not adhere to the protocol should be used in the analysis. That's what it means like intention to treat. You take everybody, whatever you design the study for, you, uh, you take everybody and to do the analysis, okay? That is the intention to treat. So let's look at what are the, um, mainly the one thing you have to remember, intention to treat uh, is usually used for randomized control study, okay? And in the, uh, just look at the difference, um, intention to treat, uh, all patients are analyzed and the treatment adherence or per protocol analysis, only the patient who received the treatment uh, is going to be analyzed. So um, again, intention to treatment is used only in the randomized control studies, remember that. Now, if you look at any study, the best way, like, I mean, we just took this example from New England Journal of Medicine, there was a study looking at, um, uh, looking at the um, incidence of uh, clotting like or DVT or pulmonary embolism in the people who had uh, heparin bridging before a procedure versus uh, no heparin bridging for the procedure. So the first thing you want to do is look at the flow diagram, how did they conduct the study, they recruited the study, calculated the people for sample size and then start um, you know doing the protocol and if you look at the left side and the right side you see a lot of people kind of dropped out or couldn't follow the protocol but when you do the analysis you have to include everybody. Even if the people who dropped out, the number should be in your analysis. That is what intention to treat analysis is, okay? Now, there was like, I mean, you know, is this research, is it proven as a concept, uh, intention to treat? Uh, it is. Um, one of the major study looking at um, in the treatment of hyperlipidemia by clofibrate, they just did the regular per protocol analysis and they found uh, clof uh, you know, clofibrate had some benefit. But when you use the intention to treat analysis, um, the benefit was not there, okay? So when the adjusted mortality rate was like not much difference when we do the, um, I mean, when we use the intention to treat analysis, it's the standard protocol, just remember that. Now, um, advantages of the, what are the, let's look at some advantages of the intention to treat, okay? It preserves the original comparability of the treatment group. I mean, it preserves the randomization. It gives a good assessment in the clinical practice like what's going to happen also. Um, if you look at the recent FDA rules, so FDA requests everybody to do the intention to treat analysis, so it's very important to know that, okay? Um, so again, uh, intention to treat, um, is usually used for randomized control studies and then you actually taking everybody whoever you design the study for regardless of their adherence or regardless they dropped out, regardless they did not the follow protocol, you still include them in your analysis and publish the results, okay? That is the term intention to treat. Thank you so much for watching today. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you again.